Where can you possibly start to say the words that will express what has taken place in a man's life over a 20 year period and beyond? The franchise, George Thomas Seaver, a right-handed pitcher from Fresno, California, dominated on the mound for 20 major league seasons. Seaver originally intended to sign with the Atlanta Braves, but after his contract was voided, the star from USC was up for grabs, and in a lottery for his services, the Mets came out on top. In 1967, Seaver won the Rookie of the Year award, finishing with a 16-13 record and 2.76 ERA in 251 innings pitched. The Mets finally started to win in 1969 as they surpassed a 500 record for the first time in franchise history. But for Seaver, being average wouldn't be something he would accept. I don't want to be a 500 ball player, I want to be a winning ball player. I'll celebrate when we win. Seaver almost threw his first career perfect game in early July. The right-hander earned his nickname, Tom Terrific, that night, pitching nine complete innings and striking out 11. The Mets won 23 of 30 games in September and moved to winning their first NL division title. Things came full circle for the 24-year-old when he defeated the Braves in Game 1 of the National League Championship Series, setting the Mets up to sweep their way to the World Series. And the pitch back a curve, topped out to third. Garrett has the ball, a throw to first. And the Mets are the National League champion. On baseball's biggest stage, the Mets took two of the first three games against the AL champion Baltimore Orioles and gave their young star the ball in game four. Seaver was his dominant self, pitching 10 innings and giving up one earned run on six hits. And one day later, the Mets completed the miracle of the century. The 2 1 pitch. There's a fly ball hit out to left, waiting is Jones. The Mets are the world champion. Kuzman being mobbed. Look at this scene. Sportsman of the Year, MVP candidate, All Star, Cy Young Award winner, the franchise was on top of the world. And under the bright lights of New York City, Seaver continued to be simply a Mason. Seaver, in his age 26 season of 1971, had the undisputed best year of his career a league leading 1.76 ERA and 289 strikeouts in 286 and a third innings pitched. Saw Seaver earn yet another All-Star appearance and finished second in Cy Young voting behind Cubs ace Ferguson Jenkins. And in 1973, Tom Terrific put the Mets on his back, pitching to a 2.08 ERA, striking out 251 hitters in 290 innings pitched for his second career Cy Young Award. After three more 20-win seasons and a third Cy Young Award, Seaver started a new chapter of his career with the Cincinnati Reds. And on June 16th, 1978, Seaver completed the stat line he had come so close to five other times back in Queens. Seaver with a pause, the check and the pitch. He bounces to first base. Dreesen has it. He goes to the bag and Seaver's got it. Bob Seaver has pitched his first major league no hitter. Coming off of an injury plagued 1982 season, Seaver was dealt back to the Mets under new ownership. And on opening day of 1983, Seaver was warmly welcomed back to Queens, throwing six scoreless innings against the rival Philadelphia Phillies. Upon the completion of his age 38 season, Seaver went to the Chicago White Sox, where he would join an exclusive club. Seaver is ready to work now to Don Baylor, and it's a high fly ball. It should be playable. Nichols is moving over. Nichols is there. The ball game is over. Seaver has won 300. After a brief stint with the Boston Red Sox in 1986, Seaver rejoined the Mets organization in its minor league system in 1987, but called it a career just two weeks later. Seaver was the first Mets player ever to have his number retired in 1988 and would be forever enshrined in Cooperstown in 1992. How you would think, anyone would think that a young kid from Fresno, California would ever end up in Cooperstown, New York. You say, how in the world can it happen? And it can happen very easily when you have the kinds of friends, the kinds of people, the kinds of support, the kinds of education, and most importantly, the kinds of family that I've had 
in my 40 years of living. Seaver returned to Queens for special occasions, including at the last game at Shea Stadium in 2008, the first game at City Field in 2009, and would throw out the ceremonial first pitch at the 2013 Midsummer Classic. Seaver was diagnosed with dementia and retired from public life in March 2019, and on August 31st, 2020, Seaver would pass away in his sleep at his home in California. The franchise was 75 years old. For WRHU, I'm Derek Futterman.